on, this is your boy Feltz here, and welcome back to another episode of the Blue Monday podcast on a Tuesday. Yes, it's happened. I said it was probably going to happen last week just because of the game against Sunderland. I was heading back from Newcastle yesterday morning, and I was far too tired and knackered to be bothered to record a podcast. But it's been a fantastic week for Manchester City Football Club, through to the next round of the FA Cup, and a crucial three points on Sunday as well. So a really, really good weekend for the Blues. And it all started off last Wednesday with a result against Huddersfield Town. A superb victory. It means we go through to the quarterfinals for an away fixture against Middlesbrough. Of course, now I believe there is no extra time added on in the FA Cup now. So, I mean, it just goes straight to extra time, I should say. It doesn't go to a replay. So, it could be a really interesting tie that next one. One of our bogey teams, I have to say, as well in Middlesbrough. So, let's not get our hopes up too much just yet. But let's first of all talk about the fixture against Huddersfield Town. A really good victory. Unfortunately, we went 1-0 down in the game after hitting the post fairly early on. And it was a goal courtesy of former Manchester City youth player Harry Bunn. He was uh, around the academy for several years. And it was nice to see, in a way, a City player come back to the Etihad. I mean, for so long, we haven't seen City players break through into the first team and properly establish themselves in the team since a player like Micah Richards, really. And it's nice to see a City player come back and still do well, performing at a relatively high level at Huddersfield Town. And I do wish Huddersfield sincerely all the best of luck for the rest of the season. I think they're a good quality team, perhaps harshly done by it in their fixture against Newcastle at the weekend. I watched that one. And it was a really enticing fixture for City. We came back into the game. We had to just too much quality in the end for Huddersfield. I mean, they played their f- second team effectively. They made a number of changes. They made some decent p- changes, but I mean, the p- squad as a whole isn't that good. There were some impressive players in there. Billings in midfield is a very, very good midfielder. Very tall. He's got a big future ahead of him. It was rumoured that Crystal Palace apparently tried to sign him in the January transfer window. You can see why. He's a big, tall lad, and I'm sure he's going to have a big future in football, especially in the English leagues if he continues at the rate which he's going at. So the best of luck to Huddersfield but City in the end showed too much quality um, really good goals in total Sané's goal, lovely lovely finish at the far post, nice work from Raheem Sterling switching it to the far post nice little through the legs thing as well I always like that and a nice finish at the far post from Sané and he went then went over to the referee and had a bit of a rant with his sticking his three fingers up. Uh, I don't particularly like seeing that, if I can be honest with you. Uh, I think it's probably one of those things at the moment, I think, especially at grassroots football, you don't really like to see referees getting hassled too much. I know there was some debate over whether they should have been penalties in the first place, but nonetheless, just get on with the game, let the referee do his job and continue. I mean, it's a weekend where we've seen referee strikes and stuff, so I don't really like to see too many referees getting berated, especially by high quality professional footballs as well then the next goal was from Aguero nice finish from the penalty spot it was a little bit harsh perhaps but it's a Premier League penalty or a La Liga penalty one which you'd only see at the top top levels but saying that Huddersfield had a very harsh penalty given against some of the week and probably more harsh in this one his hands were all over Aguero referee pointed to the spot and City eventually got the penalty and then moments later Zabaleta took home from a short range he continues to score goals I mean it's his first in a couple of years I think but nonetheless it was a very, very nice finish from Zabba. I've always got time for a Zabaleta finish. I always like that. And then in the end, it was rounded off by goals from Aguero. Nice tucked away finish at the near post. And similar again from Kelechi Iheanacho. Lots of positives. The only negative I have to say was probably Claudio Bravo in the fixture again. Letting in the first shot of the game. As per usual, it seems. I don't really know how. This one, he really should have done better. Yes, his defence in front of them wasn't the best. Otamendi and Stones, again, fairly poor in front of him. But they're not exactly the best defenders you're ever going to see in your life. But the keeper is expected to make saves. That's the go- job of the goalkeeper. That's the fundamental job which he's got to do. Yes, he was fairly nice passing the ball around. But when he's got to save shots, he obviously can't do it. And it's a very, very big problem. His confidence is massively knocked. I think it's fair to say that but then again I mean City fans are getting at him and he's just you know he's having a bit of a go back at City fans it's not really a way to win fans over the way to win fans over is by performances on the pitch Willy Caballero last couple of seasons hasn't exactly been a star at Manchester City until he came in through in that very very big game last year in the League Cup final saved some penalties fantastic performance on the pitch and eventually he's come through, and now I want to see Willie playing every week. Yeah, he really does fill me with confidence a lot more than Bravo does. Willie is a top quality keeper. He's a very, very good second choice keeper. Perhaps not the first choice keeper which City need. I think we probably do need a replacement. Whether it is Joe Hart coming back at Manchester City, I'd love to see. Uh, practically, though, it's 
probably never going to happen, we've got to be honest with ourselves, unfortunately. So we'll have to see what happens in the summer, but for the moment, I'd love to see Caballero start more games. Bravo, don't have a go at the fans. A lot of the time, they're being ironic just because they're commenting on what your performance has been like on the pitch. Keep working hard on the pitch, make saves, keep clean sheets, and City fans will be won over. That's the way to win fans over, not by sticking your hands to your ears and going, yeah, I made a save, congratulations, da 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 So anyway, that's that game finish against Huddersfield. Really good win, and a big... Me a big win, which means we go through to the Huddersfield, and um, and a big win, which means we go through to the Middlesbrough game in the next round away from home. And as I said, they're a bit of a bogey team. We've gone out to them in the FA Cup about three years ago under Pellegrini. Probably should have done better. We drew one all against them in the Premier League this season. It was a very very poor performance in that one, and we still yet to play them away from home. But we'll play them away from home in this cup fixture, and we'll have to see where it goes. Big props to Middlesbrough as well for charging £10 for away supporters to go for adults. That's what we like to see in modern football. And we're sure there'll be plenty of City fans heading up to the North East to watch that. So Sunday's game was a fixture against Sunderland. Of course, they're bottom of the league. They're very, very much stricken at the bottom of the league. It looks now they're about six points behind the team, which is currently sat in 17th place. And they've got a lot of 16th place, you should say, and they've got a lot of work to do. They really do. Just uh, 17th, yeah, I'm right. And they've got a lot of work to do if they were to catch up with 17th place. Their team wasn't great. I've got to be honest with you, their side isn't good at all. Like, you look at them, there's too many old players in there, and there's not enough people who have got enough quality in the side for them to stay up. Probably one of the worst Premier League teams I've seen in a number of years, and if it wasn't for Jermaine Defoe, they would be absolutely nowhere. Just look at their back line, apart from Pickford, I feel sorry for the guy, because he's had a lot of work to do this season, and he's come out with flying colours. He's impressed me quite a lot of of times this season and he's fairly decent at the weekend he made a number of saves couldn't really do too much for either of City's goals and he really does have a big future in English football but whereas the rest of the players they don't really fill me with too much confidence watching them Lamina Kone doesn't want to be at the club John O'Shea is well past it uh, right back I mean Billy Jones has never been a quality player left back I thought Oviedo had a decent game for Sunderland I've got to be honest with you and then in midfield Yanazai didn't really do anything I mean Darren Gibson did nothing Didier and Dong got the worst haircut and also one of the worst footballers I've seen and uh, that was pretty much it Barini did okay probably should have scored perhaps from the rebound of Jermaine Defoe's effort but they weren't particularly a very very decent side we've just got to hold our hands up and say you can only play what's in front of you and City did very well I went to the game if you've not seen the vlog on my channel go ahead and check it out it's very much a very tasty watch fantastic away day really do recommend you heading up to the northeast the people are lovely had absolutely no problems it was really funny great game good atmosphere as well um, not from the Sunderland fans but I can completely understand when you've got a shocking manager playing incredibly negative football you know I feel sorry for the new Sunderland fans I really do because the last couple of seasons you've had it everything against you and I can't blame you for the atmosphere I've got to be honest with you but nonetheless great atmosphere from City fans fantastic away day and one of the only places I've been to I think which I've ever seen in a away ground sell double vodka shots that was really an interesting one. It's almost like you go into a nightclub at times in that one. Like that. But City's performance on the pitch, impressive. That front three again. Sergio Aguero, looking good. We saw him in a Huddersfield game, closing people down. And again, he continued that again. Sané on the wing, he's developing into a superb footballer. He's still so young and has got so much talent. I mean, it really, really is impressive. The amount of difference he's come through from the start of the season. He seems to be clinical in front of goal. I like it. I really do and the future is so so bright Sterling didn't have the best of games of the weekend but still nonetheless perhaps got the assist it was a bit of a deflection from Oviedo but nonetheless a tucked away finish at the near post from Sergio Aguero we took our time perhaps our quality wasn't great uh, in front of goal we didn't really create all too much at times Leroy Sani put in a nice ball across the box early on and David Silva couldn't really get on the end of it because Sane fired it far too quickly across the middle. But overall, a pretty decent performance from City. In the second half as well, it was much the same. Good finish from Sane. Tucks it away at the far post. Sterling, I mean, was decent. He puts in the ball to Silva and Silva just really does sort of run the games. We're so, so lucky to have David Silva. He's probably our best player this season. Overall, he chips in with goals, assists. He just seems to do it all. He's a special, special player. I talked about in last week's podcast about the Monaco game, how good David Silva was. And once again, he was superb. And to cap it off, we got an English interview from David Silva at the end of the game. We know we can speak English. We saw things from him in the past from pre-season and stuff of him speaking English. But 
But it's nice to actually hear the man who's the captain at the moment speaking in English as well. He's been here for a number of years. Hopefully we'll see him chasing around Manchester City Centre going, all right, kid, how's it going? How's the lads? Yeah, not too bad, not three bad. That sort of stuff. That's what I hear from David Silva. So it's a superb performance from Manchester City in the last week. And it now means that we are third in the table after Tottenham's win against Everton at the weekend. We are three... Well, we're only one point behind Tottenham, I have to say. But we've also got a game in hand that'll come in Wednesday against Stoke City. And we'll move on to that fixture straight away, why don't we? So, of course, we've got the Manchester United game as well, which is yet to be scheduled based on different things like the Europa League and all this different nonsense and stuff. But I'm sure that'll get fitted in at some point. But nonetheless, the Stoke City game this week. Stoke City are in fairly decent form. They had a good win at the weekend. They're currently sat in ninth place. It's probably not been the most sterling of seasons for them. But once again, Mark Hughes is keeping things very... Very, very tidy. He just gets the job done and he's continuing to do it every single season. Uh, he's a middle... Middle, uh, he's like a mid-table team expert. That's the way I describe it. They won two 0 against Middlesbrough. It was a fairly drab performance, but good finishes again from Arnautovic. He picked up a double in this fixture. It'll be an interesting fixture this one because Mark Hughes, when he comes to City, always puts in a decent little shift with his sides. We'll have to see how they get on. They've got a number of injuries. Wilfred Boney, of course, will be inel ineligible, but he's not really played at all this season anyway, so that doesn't really matter. So we'll have to see how that fixture pans out. Again, it could be really interesting. Interesting. Crouchy could be probably starting in this one, so he's always going to be a different proposition for our defenders. He's a very technically, <laughs> he's always good for his like, how he's how tall Crouchy is. He always impresses me when I watch him play. So we'll have to see how Crouchy gets on, but he's still an aerial threat. And hopefully we can come away with this fixture of a nice win against a decent Stoke City team. They're like you never know with Stoke at the moment. They're coming out with some fantastic performances and also some awful performances. So the game against Spurs the other week, they lost 4-0 and looked shocking in that game. But I'm sure as long as City, you know, as long as we look bang up for it, there'll probably be a few changes. I imagine that De Bruyne will probably start this one after being left out of the weekend. You know, fair enough, I don't mind us resting players against teams like Sunderland as long as they come back into the next game and they're fighting fit and ready to go and I'm sure that's exactly what will happen against Stoke City so and then after that we have the game away from home it is the game against Middlesbrough in the FA Cup a really big tie and we really do want to do well in this one especially because it's a competition which we probably have the best chance of winning in this season it really has to be said they're a decent team which at times haven't been able to score much this season. They've got Negredo up front, who again is a proposition. He's a big man up front. It'll be interesting to see whoever plays the back will play in that one. I'd like to see Vincent Company perhaps start in this FA Cup game. He's meant to be back to fitness, but I'm hoping that we put in a very, very strong side. Still, Gabriel Jesus is still out, so it'll probably be either Kelechi or Aguero playing up front. Um, but it'll happen, happen to see what happens to that. We've also got the Monaco game coming up as well next week as well. So it really, really is a lot of fixtures coming up. In my opinion, the FA Cup should perhaps be prioritised. Because in my opinion, it's the fixture and also the competition which you are perhaps have the best chances in. There is a chance that the quarterfinals will just be teams from the top six. So it could be... Arsenal, Chelsea, it could be United, it could be Spurs going through, and it could be City potentially if we do well as well. Now, at the moment, the things I have to say about Middlesbrough, their back line isn't too bad. They've got some impressive defenders in there, but they haven't really done all too well recently. They've just slipped into the relegation zone. They've also, going forward, having a lot of trouble. I mean, the man who scored the most goals since this season is Alvaro Negredo, and I believe he scored seven goals all year. But that's nonetheless not to take them lightly. I'm sure they'll still want to try and win this competition. I mean, if you said to any Middlesbrough supporter, you can get relegated, but win the FA Cup, they'll break your hand off, I can guarantee it. So it's a big fixture. I'd like to see us put out a very strong team and go and win that fixture. But with the Monaco game several days later, it'll be interesting to see what Pep does with that. But we've got some massive fixtures coming up. This is a huge week for City. And hopefully we can come away with it with yet another superb couple of wins. And also clean sheets as well. Because that's one thing which we're improving on at the moment as well. So we'll have to see how that one gets on. But to liven things up in this podcast, I thought we'd discuss a few other things. So each week I'll perhaps get maybe a guest on or someone else. So we can discuss a few other things aside from sitting. So the thing which I was going to talk about today is the best goal that I've ever seen live. So... 
I'm going to put this one out to you in the comments section. What was the best goal which you guys have ever seen live? It has to be one which you've been at the game probably. And you know what? If you've seen on TV, fair enough. It's still up for debate. But I'd like to see what you guys say. So for me, as a Manchester City fan, there's a couple of goals which always stick in your memory. I was at the Sergio Aguero game where we won the league in the 90th minute. That goal was special in terms of how much it meant to everyone. The significance of the goal, beating Manchester United on the last day of the season to win the league. Your first Premier League title in so, so long. It means so much to so many City fans. It really was the start of the revolution in a way. There's a number of other goals which stick to mind as well. There's the Yaya Torre goal in against Sunderland in the League Cup final. Sami Nasri's in the same game was just absolutely out of this world. I remember really good goals from people like Carlos Tevez. He scored wonderful free kick against Stoke City after we beat Stoke a couple of days after we beat them in the FA Cup. Of course, Torre's goal in the FA Cup final again, that was special. Against Manchester United in the semi-final the same year was special too. There's so many great memories of so many many great competitions which we've won things in but for me this will certainly come as a surprise to so many people for me one of the best goals which I've ever seen in the Etihad was Danny Mills that is right Danny Mills that bald lad who talks rubbish on BBC yes that's right Danny Mills it was a long long time ago he was playing against Everton and it was the best season which Danny Mills ever had for us. It was the year in which Mika Richards broke for into the first team. Apologies, I can't remember when, but the manager at the time was definitely Stuart Pearce. And he had a really good first half of that season, Danny Mills. That's all I remember. And then he got an injury and never came back for City and just decided to sit in our youth academy and get paid about £30,000 a week every single week. Because he was just a robber, basically. But until then, he scored a worldie of a goal. It was against Everton. It was down the right-hand side. And he just smacked it and it went right into the top bins very similar to the Alano goal against Newcastle but this wasn't from a dead ball situation Alano's free against Newcastle was a superb goal too mind I do remember that one that was absolutely belting from a free kick but this one just seemed to sail into the top bins and I think the reason why it was such a good goal is I think it's just because the person who scored it. It was Danny Mills scoring this absolute worldie. He didn't score too many goals for City as far as I remember. So it stuck in my mind as being one of the best goals which I've ever seen live. And it just it's just a little bit odd how I think that. I don't know why it was just special at the time. So there you go. That's about all I've got time for on this week's podcast. Hopefully you can join me again next week. There's plenty to talk about previewing the Monaco fixtures. Game against Liverpool in that same week. Wow, it's a very, very big week for Manchester City. And hopefully we can come out of it saying that we're next in the Champions League. We're going through and hopefully in the FA Cup and still be in the shot of potentially winning the Premier League at the end of it. So there you go. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe and check out the links in the description below. I'll read about you.